Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Dmitry Palchun. I am the founder of uh, Dapless Project and uh, Mutable Web. Um, oh, does it work? Okay. Uh, so, who are Dapless Project? Uh, at the first time, it's uh, technology, it's a platform that makes two things. It parses the websites on the fly and introduces a semantic layer, it's a live semantic layer, uh, that exposes insertion points and uh, it becomes possible to attach applications or widgets to this um, uh, insertion points. And um, they are attached to this model, and these applications are executed in um, user's browser in the decentralized and permissionless way. What is a mutable web? Mutable web is a new Web3 architecture. It's a joint technology between Boss, uh, made by Boss and Duplets, and it targets the entire web and targeted millions of existing websites also. Um, the most important, it becomes, uh, the websites becomes mutable on user's demand, not on the owner's mercy, not under his approval. And in the end, it makes communities self-sustainable and resilient, and it starts unstoppable transformation from Web 2 to Web 3. And I will show why and how it goes. In order to understand how it works, uh, just uh, let's see an example. Assume you, we would like to insert a dislike button into near social. Uh, I am the author of this change, and um, um, uh, someone else, a near social, is the author, is the owner uh, of the website. So how it works? How can I change the, someone's website? Oops. Work. Yeah. It works uh, in two ways. I can make a fork, uh, but, um, or I can uh, make a pull request. But most probably my pull request gets rejected if we are a small community using this dislike button and new social can have thousands or maybe millions, we hope, of users. And if our request doesn't make uh, the owner of the web page uh, reach, or anyone happy, our pull request will be rejected. So we can only fork. Uh, but in order to fork, we need to fork not only the button, we need to fork the container, then we need to fork the container of the container, but then we need to fork the container of the container of the container of the container, and at the end, we ending up, up to forking the whole website, and it becomes an independent fork. So, we have a few problems with this approach. First, this simple change requires a lot of work, excessive work, unnecessary work, or a lot of pull requests uh, to convince a lot of owners for every component, if every component, every container uh, owned by another party. It doesn't work for future usages, it doesn't work for calculated dependencies, and it doesn't work uh, for other gateways. It doesn't apply for other gateways. So it's huge work if I would like to roll out this small change or get it integrated into another gateway. And this forked gateway has no usage. This is the last big problem. It, it has to be promoted in original community, but the original communities are owned by the owner of the website, it means any promotion uh, from fork near at uh, social near or the mob near is accused under approval at atmosphere at of its owner. It's not permissionless, so it's not decentralized. How we can ch solve this problem? So we have patched the Boss VM, and now Boss VM is capable to apply changes on the fly, and these changes are introduced by the owner himself. This is uh, uh, permissionless. It gets applied to runtime, and it, these changes are visible 
two communities who submitted to this mutation, we call it mutation, and uh, the switch between mutation is always visible. It creates a competition between mutations, and it's all visible on the original website. So let us see how it will work, how it could be implemented. Um, you see the original near social website with some additional element, book one. It's a mutation switcher. Currently, it's original. It means there's no mutation applied. Uh, we go to the applications. We look. We are looking for this uh, dislike button application. Starting is as usual, but instead of opening a new website, it gets applied and integrated on the fly, and uh, this. Uh, dislike buttons get integrated on the fly. And it means we have created a mutation. It's local for now, but it's already here. Um, what we can do with it? We can switch between mutations. So if we go to another mutations uh, maintained, for example, from DevHub, the dislike mutation disappears because it's not in this, not the part of this mutation. We can switch back, and then it will appear as well. Uh, we can choose uh, and we, the editor, and we can uh, change this mutation and add more applications to it. Then we can publish this mutation, and this mutation becomes available. We can share a link to this mutation, and anyone who will click on the link will open the mutated version of the original website. And we can propose this mutation as a pull request uh, to the author of the original website or the original mutation. And this set of application, uh, if accepted, uh, will be integrated in, the, in their mutation. And we can also set this application as default. It means if I am part of this com of some community, a default version of my uh, default version will be set to um, uh, to the mutated version of the near social. It's uh, very important as well. So we can uh, use the same uh, narrative to and expand it to the web too. Dapless provide. Uh, insertion point where these applications can be integrated into Web2 uh, legacy websites. So this is example how we did it. It's already implemented in the hackathons. So this is, uh, these badges are both components integrated uh, into Twitter seamlessly. And the switch, the mutation switch, is provided as well. So, Important to understand, this uh, mutable web is a main narrative change and paradigm change uh, for the entire web. It changes the way how the web can be used, how it can be owned, controlled, and how we can make business in the web. Um, for example, um, the websites become changeable on user's demand, not the under uh, owner's approval. Uh, users become a uh, community-owned version of the website by default. It's very important uh, because if anyone thinks uh, that he should go to some uh, near social uh, in order to communicate to each other, the community becomes owned because the website is owned. But if anyone thinks he should go to some another resource owned by the community, uh, the ownership or the power of the owner ends because uh, community owns this resource and the community becomes independent and self-sustainable. Community can deliver own, own services into other websites, other to the web, uh, websites sorry, uh, created and owned by other parties. And owners can adapt unit of functionality or applications that are already released and tested by community. It means currently owners uh, become a lot of feature requests and should implement them or pull requests and should believe that they, it will work well. But in muta mutable web, owners should only accept already tested uh, applications with real usage. It's very easy. 
Uh, control on governance, it will change as well. Uh, communities can resist undesired changes and can implement own features. It means uh, that they control their front end. It implies that community can choose which backend to use because if you control front end, you can uh, set where to which backend is to be used. And finally, community gain control over the UI it uses, and there's no matter who created this UI and who owns it currently. And as said, community can deliver owners. Uh, own services into websites owned by others. The community becomes spread over multiple websites in the mutable web. We have a huge impact on economics. Because communities become resilient economic actors, nobody can extract too much value anymore from the communities because communities can fork out, can, community can resist. Owners become major community token holder because if owners cannot extract much community, uh, much uh, value from the community, if you can't beat them, they will try to lead them. So we'll join the community as a major token holder to keep the influence. And in order to uh, keep this evaluation of this token high, they will tokenize existing. Uh, fiat-based uh, services or legacy services, legacy businesses, uh, into tokenized models. And this will create an investing opportunity and attract capital because it moves huge, uh, I would say, legacy-controlled uh, businesses to crypto world. So what is the impact on near community and the ecosystem? As a boss becomes enabled on millions of websites, of legacy websites. And um, Mutable Web will attract crypto investors because it moves legacy economics into crypto. And I believe, I truly believe that Mutable Idea is powerful enough to serve as a main narrative for, for Neo, as an open web, as a truly open web narrative. And I believe uh, Mutable Web has the potential to generate uh, considerable usage for Neo. So, let's summarize everything. The all major actors, users, communities, owners, investors, all of them have incentives to join Mutable Web to make it happen. And no one can prevent others from joining because the user's browser is always under user control. Currently, user let the owner of the website control his browser, but it's not necessary. A user can control uh, the browser. It's always possible. Uh, no one can prevent others, I told, sorry. Uh, in conclusion, the transition from Web 2 to mutable web uh, will become unstoppable because anyone can join, no one can stop, and there is incentives. Oh, that is. Sorry. So, thank you.